僕は鉄を I thought about doing a short resume on the characters in the story of Akira to contextualize with this presentation before everything else. But if you're watching this, most likely it's because you're a fan of the anime movie and you already know what it is all about. For everyone else, I highly advise you to watch it if you're a fan of the cyberpunk scene and an anime in general. Akira is based on the Japanese manga, drawn and written by Katsuhiro Otomo from 1982 to 1990 and is composed of six volumes. Around 1987, while working on volume 4, Otomo was offered the opportunity to create an animated adaptation of his manga work for an anime movie. He agreed to produce the manga adaptation of the series on the grounds that he retained creative control of the project to prevent loss of character and plot identity. Akira is considered the origin of the Japanese cyberpunk subgenre, a landmark in Japanese animation, and is considered paramount for the growth of the anime and Japanese popular culture in the Western world as we know it. Due to its growing popularity worldwide, it was just a matter of time until a video game company would seek to purchase the rights for a video game adaptation that could be fit of the quality of the anime. Akira video games can be traced back to 1993, when Steve Harris, the founder of Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine, gave a VHS tape to Lawrence David Siegel, which was at the time the president of Black Pearl Software, a software house and game publisher which developed games for multiple gaming platforms in the 90s. After watching the movie, Siegel knew that the animation and context behind Akira was fit for a successful video game. Siegel traveled to Japan and due to his energy and enthusiasm towards the anime, was able to acquire the rights to produce a game by Kodansha Comics, which was behind the publishing of Akira manga by Katsuhiro, who he also knew in person during his visit. After Siegel returned, Blackpool Software began works on Akira for the Sega Genesis. During this period, Blackpool was merged with THQ, becoming a subsidiary. Larry Siegel would become THQ Chief Operating Officer during the next two years. Due to this merging, the rights for an Akira game to be developed were transferred to THQ Software, which decided to attribute the rights to several software companies for several cross-platform versions to be developed. Though production for other platforms, such as the Game Gear, the Amiga, the Sega CD and Game Boy had been assigned, the consoles for which the original Akira games would be known were the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo versions. The Sega Genesis version had begun being developed by Black Pearl Software around 1993, while the Super Nintendo and Game Boy versions had been assigned to handmade software. The Game Boy version would eventually drop down to Ice Software, but would become an entire different game due to the 8-bit limitation of the handheld system. Handmade Software would then remain with the sole production of Akira for the Super Nintendo. Handmade Software was famous for developing games for the Atari Lynx console. The company was known to have great animators and programmers. A prime example of such game is Dracula The Undead, released in 1991, which featured a rich story and exceptional creative pixel renderings that pushed the Lynx to the limits. The Super Nintendo version of Akira started production in the late 1993. Following Handmade Software CEO Jim Gregory, the team was very passionate about the project. They spent at least six weeks, initially, dissecting the comic books and still frame grabbing from the Laserdisc version they had from the anime. According to Jim, the sound effects the team was able to come up with were great. He also stated the music developer was even able to produce a perfect version of the film music, which sadly could not be used due to separate licensing issues. Also, in order to make the game faithful to the movie, they implemented several game styles like platform exploration, first person and isometric bike levels with animations that will make full use of the Mode 7 and SFX chips for the system. Though the Super Nintendo game development seemed to be advancing at good pace, the production was affected by a series of disagreements with the project manager from THQ related with some of the game element content and licensing attributions and also due to the limitations the Super Nintendo had 
versus the type of content the manager demanded the team to pull off. As explained by Jim Gregory from Handmade Software, one of the greatest challenges of game design, when it is for a license, is meeting the demands of the licensee. They often do not understand the trade-offs that are needed to accommodate the capacity and limitations of the target device, and they expect it to look like an animated feature film. Many of the emerging consoles, world garden development systems and the manufacturers all wanted exclusive titles rather than the Me Too ones. It was hard or impossible even to get the data to develop on the machines unless they approved you. During the second half of 1994, with the push support from THQ and with the project manager persisting on pointing systematic disagreements regarding the game content and the lack of direction the game was to take during more advanced stages of development resulted on the lead programmer to abandon the project along with Jim Gregory. With the dismiss of two key members of handmade software and to try and stop the bleeding, THQ still assigned a new project manager to Akira, but the damage had been done, and in the beginning of 1995 the project was scrapped. According to Jim Gregory, it was a very ambitious project, and too much was expected from the older 16-bit machines. I think it was a project before its time. These days, we could do a fantastic job on the modern Xbox or PC system. Little to Nothing is none of the development of the Sega Genesis version by Black Pearl Software, except that at the 29th of February of 2016, a VHS video surfaced on YouTube, showing a gameplay demo for the Genesis version of Akira, which had been recorded in the Summer Consumer Electronics Show in July of 1994. The Genesis version being shown had been developed by Black Pearl Software from Larry Siegel, was also scrapped in the end of 1994, after several pushbacks and mistreatment, Larry Siegel and his company parted ways from THQ, mainly due to frustration and lack of support never to work with that publisher again. In the recorded gameplay, we could see the area selection map, video renderings adapted from the movie, and several gameplay areas like the platform game type in the sewers and the famous isometric bike riding levels. With time, not much remained from the originally developed Akira games from Black Pearl and Handmade Software. Documentation and other information were reduced to magazine printed screenshots and game previews from magazines. They can all be found all over the internet and are all from the time the games were to come out for both platforms. At the 25th of December of 2019, Hidden Palace Community revealed they had been offered an authentic physical Akira prototype for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive by an undisclaimed donor. The prototype is very similar to the version depicted at SCES 94, with the difference of some enemies, sounds and music, which are missing, which points that this version of the game was previous to the one shown in the show in July 1994. By using a code data logger, Hidden Palace staff was also able to confirm that just two-thirds of the ROM are accessible, while the remaining third could not be accessed despite the data being present. This data can also contain additional cutscenes, bosses, enemies, and coding for objects that simply aren't utilized. Also, Hidden Palace was able to dump the physical copy and made the prototype available for download. Maybe in the future, the Super Nintendo prototype or more polished version can end up by showing up somewhere and allow us to enjoy a game which was very promising and important at the time for both systems. Defiance signing out. Come on,